So if you're in tech or you're wanting to learn more about tech, then having a home lab is one of the greatest things ever. I started off in my career knowing just this much about technology. I started working in tech and then I realized how little I actually knew. So I took it upon myself to actually go and teach myself tech. And the way that I started doing that was by building my own home lab, an actual space at home where I actually had some spare computers, it doesn't have to be servers or anything fancy like that, just some older laptops, older desktops that were not really doing much. And then I started using them to build servers, to actually build devices on my home lab for my own learning. So this video, we're gonna cover my five recommended servers that you should be building in your home lab. Now this could be for your own learning, but also, I mean, this is what I do, for example, is my home lab is also part of my home network. So my network is tied into my home lab, and then I can use some of the things that I've built in my home lab to sort of benefit my wider network. Oh, and if you're here for the first time, welcome, really happy that you have stopped by, but you're probably not subscribed, a lot of you are not, a lot of you are, but a lot of you are not, so why don't you click on that button on the bell? I release videos every week on a whole bunch of tech, stuff so I know you'll definitely find it helpful so click on the button on the bell if you want to learn a whole bunch more about home lab stuff I've got a full-length training course on Udemy by the way uh, in the show notes in the description below you can actually check that out it's been super super popular a whole heap of people have already commented saying how helpful it's been to them to be able to build their own lab and now they are much better in technology because of that so why don't you click on that uh, show note description to that Udemy course on the home lab. I know you'll find it helpful. So to build these five servers of some sort, I always recommend before you even get started to have some sort of an environment set up to actually house all of this stuff. So we talked about having some laptops or some desktops, something spare. But what I love to do is I like to actually build a virtual environment. So I like to have something running where I can build multiple VMs, multiple virtual machines on one or more computers so that I'm taking advantage of the hardware and not using all of that one computer for one function only. I can use that one virtual machine for one thing, another virtual machine for another thing, another virtual machine for another thing, perhaps all sitting and running on one physical computer. Something like VMware's ESXi, you can download that completely for free. You can use Citrix Zen Server. You could even download VMware Workstation also for free. Now, in my opinion, the very first VM you need to build, which sort of forms the foundation for you to be able to do everything else, is building something that can create a domain in your home lab. So this is building a domain controller, something that actually runs Active Directory, runs your DNS, so you can manage all the computers, all of your users. You can build your domain. You can have computers talking to that domain. Authentication. If you're ever gonna work in a company as a tech, as a systems admin, as a network person, you sort of need to know about domains and about domain administrators and Active Directory and DNS. Sort of, sort of foundational. Connected very, very closely to these two is my number two, a DHCP server. Now DHCP is a server or a service that is actually dishing out, pushing out IP addresses to your network. When a computer, a smartphone, anything that needs some sort of an IP address is connected to a network, it's gonna go and scan the network and go, hello, I'm out here. Can somebody give me an IP address? Because unless that computer has an IP address, it's not gonna really know where to go, where to fetch information. It's not gonna be able to do anything until it's got its own IP address. Windows Server with DHCP, the role configured and installed, go and create your relevant zones so that your computers out on your network, your devices, your smart devices, your TVs, your iPhones, all of that sort of stuff can actually then take advantage of you centrally managing all of the IP addresses. Why not actually host your own VPN? You probably used VPN to some extent. You're maybe using it to connect to some foreign countries or to hide your privacy when you're online. But wouldn't it be nice if you were actually managing and hosting your own VPN in your home lab. You're connecting to a hotspot down at McDonald's. You don't trust that hotspot too much. So wouldn't it be nice if you could actually VPN in to your own VPN? A couple that I use would be WireGuard or OpenVPN, one of those two, they're pretty good. There are others out there. But then you centrally manage and control all of your VPN traffic. So along with all these other potential servers that you can build down the track, you know, because we're only talking about five, but you can build a plethora of servers, there's plenty of uh, service for you to choose from, you wanna be able to make sure that your whole environment is running safe. Not just your servers, 
but your devices, your network devices, your maybe if you've got some storage, you've got maybe a NAS, you wanna make sure that things are running well. So why don't you build yourself some sort of a monitoring or security server? Something that is monitoring your network, something that is scanning your networks, something that is checking for odd behavior on your network, something that is making sure that your network devices are up, alerts you when they're down, when you're running out of hard drive space, wouldn't it be nice for you to know about it? Maybe controlling some sort of a firewall rule as well. Now, yes, you can have firewalls out on a physical router. There's firewalls there. Could be running something like PFSense. Absolutely brilliant open source firewall that you can actually install on your computer, manage all of your traffic coming in, coming out, what ports it can do, whitelisting, blacklisting, all of that. Knowing that sort of stuff and being able to monitor and know the health of everything, learning about security is gonna help you greatly uh, in the real world tech force. If you're a tech geek, which I'm sure that you probably are if you're watching this channel, you have uh, a lot of data, terabytes, terabytes of data. What happens if all of that dies? That would be really, really bad. If you don't have a backup, you know, how many times do people say back up your data? People do not listen. People will listen once they've lost their data. And that's the worst time is to then put a backup in place when you've lost all of your data. So get yourself a backup server, dedicated device for having backups managed centrally. You have a schedule, so you maybe you back up every single day at this particular time. Backs it up to this different location. You could back it up to a USB stick. You could back it up to another NAS. You could back it up to the cloud. The cloud's a good one. You have to pay a little bit, but backing it up to a different spot. So back it up to a device that then you can securely take off site and then you're fine. So that in the event that you do need to recover anything, you are sure that your backups are safe somewhere else. There are a whole bunch more. This is just an introduction five. So why don't you let us know down below, were any of these five in the list of servers that you're thinking about building? Were there any other servers that you may wanna build as well? That's it, comment, like, you're not subscribed, so do that. Click the button on the bell. We'll see you next time when we talk about all things tech. See ya.